Welcome to Paladin Global Market. And today I have with us Sean Taylor, and I'm so excited to have him back on the show. Welcome to the show, Sean. Hey, Michelle. Good to see you again. It's been a while. Yes, it has. And that is exactly why I wanted to have you on back on the show. Um, so Sean, when we first met, we actually met through YouTube, right? We were watching somebody else's content and you made a comment and reached out because you saw that I had been, I sold consignment and sold um, and did that full time with my newborn. And so you were just asking some questions about that. But um, just tell them a little bit more about when that scenario about when we met back then and what has changed since then. Excellent. Yeah. So when I met Michelle, I had um, been reselling since September of 2019 and I had started mm -hmm. a YouTube channel about six months later and I was having a lot of fun meeting people mainly to figure mm -hmm. out what I was doing and trying to, to get good at it. And I noticed Michelle and her daughter had like a little team duo going on with the reselling. Yep. So um, I thought that was interesting because I had, um, you know, I have plans of having a kid soon and I want them to be mm -hmm. successful much earlier than, than me. So I thought maybe that'd be a good person to like pick her brain and figure out, uh, figure out what that was all about. Yeah. So yeah, now, you know, now things are, you know, I'm glad we, we reconnected. It was two, it was almost two years, I think, since I we last talked, that. like a year and yeah. a half. So it's definitely been a while. Yes. And so when we met and I interviewed you at that time, you were selling part-time, right? On oh, eBay. Right. Yes. And, I was selling part-time for sure. Yep. And you had a full-time job. I mean, you had aspirations of wanting to step over into the full-time world of reselling. Yes. And then yes. when we met back up, I, I messaged you, I think, was it on YouTube or I reached back out to you recently? Yeah. Hey, how are you doing? Um, you had told me you did go full-time, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, that's right. So Exciting. I had, um, when I first found reselling, I realized how much uh, potential there was yeah. in the reselling. So I was selling, um, everything under the sun like the big like the tvs with the vcrs vcrs video games uh shoes uh some clothes and just anything and everything and then yeah. and then i i i realized you know if i can make this much money i can replace my income and and maybe i could do it so i know when i started years ago my husband was working full time and so i still had a little bit of that to you know back me up on when i leaped out and to do this um but I'm sure as the man of the household, it probably was a little more weight on your shoulders, would you um, say, as you experienced this, that to, to do the step out? Yeah, yeah, kind of. I mean, my wife mm -hmm. makes pretty good money. So like awesome. she was making a little bit more money than I was with my, mm -hmm. uh, my, cop, my job repairing copiers. Yeah. And, uh, but then I was doing the reselling on the side. So I was kind of making more. And then um, it just, there's a couple of things that happened with my last job. So one, uh, last summer, I actually got in a, a car wreck, like uh, oh, while I was working. Yeah, the car was totaled oh. and it was a little, um, uh, just like a little Buick or something. Yeah. And a big truck just turned right in front of me. And, and oh, it was a pretty traumatic thing. Like not in the sense that like I was uh, hurt or anything. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I may have had a concussion, oh, but I started thinking like, why did this happen? Like, mm -hmm. uh, is this going to be, that would just be it, you know, like, yeah. so, so it kind of made me appreciate like my days a little mm -hmm. bit more. And then mm -hmm. a month after that, my grandma passed away oh, okay. and my grandma Sorry. was in, you know, she was diabetic. Thank you. And she seemed healthy as all get out, you know, and she just had a heart attack and died. So it really shifted to like, uh, taking care of my grandfather mm -hmm. and kind of making sure he was right. Money. So my parents and I like were going over there and then, and then it came down to like, I needed the, the whole week off. And, mm -hmm. and my boss, he said, you know, I can't provide like paid time for that whole week. And I said, that's fine. I don't need any, any pay. Cause I had mm -hmm. the reselling money coming in money. and he didn't really want to give me the days. He, he was very like, um, stingy oh. and just, he's like, we're a small company, you know, and him and, and Han. And mm -hmm. I said, you know what? I, I don't think I need it anymore. So that was mm -hmm. really like the 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 last kind of thing and and I had already kind mm -hmm. of planned it but like you can talk about these kind of things but whenever there's major life changes it, it's yeah. hard to do I mean it's scary yeah. you know you're worried that things aren't going to work out or sure. you will not have enough money but sometimes you just have to take that take that risk mm -hmm. and, and bet on yourself you know trust trust your skills yeah and um, know that you know when your back's against the wall you're gonna yeah. you're gonna make it happen so I'm so proud I'm sorry that you went through that that it was intense. Um, 
is no fun. I, but I'm glad that the silver lining to all of that is that it was what you needed to go ahead and make that leap over. Um, I, for one, as you know, I'm just, I, I love being full-time. I love doing this and having the freedom and not being stuck in a job. Um, having to ask for time off for things. I've had some similar experiences myself. And um, tell me when you finally made that leap and you finally had the schedule was all yours and you could do what you want to do. How did you feel? Oh my gosh. I felt great. Like I still get, I start like my heart's kind of beating just thinking about it. Yeah. I mean, I remember came, I came back in the truck and my wife was with me too. And I was just like, Good. yes, like I did, I did it. And then the next day, I think I didn't do like, any reselling. I kind mm -hmm. of took a day to just kind of like focus and, and yeah. think and um, kind of like think, okay, like that's it. Like I don't, I could, you know, I could sit out in my backyard all day if I want, or I can right. do this all day. And I was just like, well, that's a pretty good feeling. So yeah, um, that month, I think it was the end of, yeah, it was the rest of June. I didn't do like a whole lot of work. And then mm -hmm. come July, I, I hit it really, really hard. So nice. So with that being said, and yeah, that makes my heart just kind of, cause I know that feeling and like, I'm free. I'm really free. And then you're like, Oh, okay. Now this is all on my own shoulders. Okay. I got to get to work. Um, but in a different way, right. Where you can make your own schedule and such what, um, looking on it now, when you were a part-time reseller and the way you viewed what full-time reselling would be compared to what it actually is for you, is there any difference in what you thought it would be like? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Please share. Yeah. Um, first, you know, when, when you're part-time sourcing is like a treat, you know, it's like mm -hmm. having a dessert, you know, like you only have a little bit of time to do it mm -hmm. and you're really excited for it and you're, you're getting all ready and planning and, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, and, and that's great. And then when you're full-time, like you can source all day if you want, you know, and then, and then it, it you lose that thrill, you know, you kind of become uh, numb to it, you know, when you find yeah. a, a $50 item for a dollar, you know, whatever it is, your business model is, it just doesn't have that same like taste. And, yeah. and I was doing YouTube on the side and, and I slowly kind of dropped off because I, I sometimes I think, how did I even have the full-time job, the part-time reselling and the YouTube channel? Because I was doing all those things at once. And then now I don't even, I don't have the energy because once I'm done reselling for the day, which is, okay. you know, I set certain, certain blocks of time is kind of how yeah. I do it. And I just don't want to do anything related to reselling. I don't really want to watch mm -hmm. any what solds or, or um, garage sale videos. Yeah. Like I just, I don't, I don't. So yeah. Uh, the other thing that is, is, is huge that I didn't think about was how much alone time there is. Mm -hmm. um, there's yeah. a lot of time where you're just thinking to yourself, like, and I kind of got a little down just because yeah. it's, um, I'm a very social person. That's, that's kind of why I started YouTube. And mm -hmm. I use that, um, you know, kind of as like, a just like an out to talk to people, like a, right. a like an emotional kind of like thing to keep myself balanced. And I didn't have that at all. So, yeah. um, even the thoughts of st like trying to do a video, I was just like, oh man, I, it's yeah. just not the same, you know? So like, right. this is, this is much different talking even on zoom than just yeah. on your own. So what uh, my wife did to, to help is she got me a dog. So Aww. we have a Labradoodle puppy. His name's oh. Ragnar and That's he's crazy. seven months old right now. Yeah. So then, um, then I had a lot of headaches cause I had a puppy. So it was kind of like, <laughs> Okay, yeah. I got all this time to do my work, but now I have right. a, a, a dog that's crying and wants to play like twenty four seven, and um, he's seven Keeping months the inventory old. Inventory up? <laughs> no, he bite. He like yeah. He just he like I can't even have him in the room. Yeah, it's yeah. Just not a good thing. Yep. So uh, I go on walks with them, which is really nice. And then that's I'll see people good. walking and, and talk with them. And that's um, good. He, he's a really good looking dog. So that has helped. And mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I guess. I guess just um, all the time when you have all the time to do anything, then um, sometimes, you know, you don't feel like doing it. And, and yeah. then your time really slips away, even though you have all day. Yes. I mean, if you're not, if you're not focused and treat it, treat it serious and treat mm -hmm. it like you would for an employer, then um, you, you won't see, you won't see the results that you're looking for. So. Yeah. I'm really glad you brought that up because that, again, that was one, uh, one thing I wanted to, to reconnect with us. Um, together and to just see the transformation that you've experienced, but you have such a, um, a great view on this experience for those who are wanting to consider to do the same. And, and like I told you before we started recording is 
I really want you to just be real with everybody. I want them to see what it is, the good, the bad, and the ugly going from part-time or side hustle reselling to full-time reselling. And I have to say, Sean, it's the same for me as far as that it can get lonely. It can be, you know, kind of monotonous. You're at your desk doing these listings by yourself. And um, I tend to, to do it later in the day. So it's getting dark at night. You know, I, I do play a lot of educational and YouTube and all that kind of stuff to kind of keep my my um, brain occupied while I'm doing the monotonous task of doing the listings. But you're right. If you don't have another outlet to reach out to people or if you don't have someone like maybe maybe having an employee or a contractor may help in that regards because you have someone there with you um, doing things. But yeah, it's a real thing, isn't it? Absolutely. I think we were kind of briefly, briefly talking about like hiring employees and things. And yeah, I think one, um, one task that I actually hired out, it wasn't like a big task, but mm -hmm. when I go sourcing, I, I do all my sourcing mainly in one day. I, mm -hmm. I get, I buy about 150 to 200 items and I go mm -hmm. out to the bigger cities from where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I come home, I have all these items and they have tags on them. So I had my uh, brother-in-law just cut the tags off. Oh, and good. while he was doing that, I was doing photos and then I started my listing. So I paid him 20 bucks, cut tags off, fold items and put them on, on the clothing rack. Perfect. And it actually, like, I was trying to like work, you know, fast. I didn't want to like, you know, go get a coffee or like take a yeah, second yeah. to like change the video. You just play whatever's playing, play the music. Uh, do the work and it, it kept me accountable. So I, I do think that's mm -hmm. a pretty powerful thing. Yeah. And um, it would definitely keep your, your schedule more consistent. Cause I I've noticed that, um, you know, I have like certain things I want to do at certain times, but then sometimes I'm like up late at night doing those listings or like prepacking for the shipping because I push volume. So mm -hmm. uh, I always have items to ship and it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot of work. So yeah, it it's is. good to know when to cut mm -hmm. it off, you know? It is. And, you know, my experience, because I've hired many contractors through the years to do, um, like, I, I have, I found that the best, uh, what works best for me is when they draft the listings for me, they do the titles, the item specifics, the weigh it, the shipping, all that, and then they just have a draft and I do the photos and then I'm good. But it's nice when they have um, come over and done that, like if I've gotten big bulk, you know, uh, inventory from clients or something I'm trying to process through. Um, it's nice because you do have that person there and you're playing music and you're kind of, you, you work faster. I, at least I do. I'm not kind of, you know, um, just going about it at my own pace by myself because no one else is looking, you know? So um, in that regards, yeah, it's definitely a bonus um, if the, you know, weighs out for your business. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me, um, you're full-time, you are expecting you and your beautiful yeah. wife are expecting a little one congratulations so my wife is 14 weeks pregnant yeah. to the day and mm -hmm. the baby is the size of a peach or no an avocado something okay. like that. some type of fruit or vegetable we've been going up the chart uh don't know the gender yet so um really hoping for a boy i don't know if a lot of guys are like that but yeah. my wife is hoping for a girl and i think I really want to have two, two kids. I want to have, uh, I want them to have their siblings. And yeah, uh, my wife has had a really hard time. She's, she's been sick a lot. Uh, oh. she's a really strict diet. She's gluten intolerant and has many allergies. Mm. So, uh, it's been tough. And in the last two weeks have been a little better, but the three weeks before that was chaotic, like, Rough, huh? very stressful. She in her second trimester now just started it. Yeah. Oh, good. That's when mine with Haley, and the second one started because I was really sick during that first one, but it started finally give me a break. So, well, I'm sorry she's been um, going through that. I know that's been a struggle, but it's nice that she's starting to see a little light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and how exciting. Oh, my gosh. So yeah. tell me, yeah. as a, a new, a new dad, you know, you have this sweet little one, whether girl or boy coming. Um, how do you think it's going to change your business, your business and, and your schedule. Be curious. Maybe we'll do an interview in another yeah. year. So we'll see. That, that'd be a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, a couple of things have kind of gone through my mind. One, um, she's going to have, you know, maybe a couple months off of work mm -hmm. to, to recover and to, you know, nurse and all those things. Mm -hmm. And then two, I've thought about like maybe in-house uh, care. Yeah. Maybe that's hiring fine. somebody because then I could kind of do help too, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I don't know if that would be cheaper or if, if with the in-house care, I could do most of my eBay work 
but like maybe before lunch and then mm-hmm. after that she can go home and then I could watch uh, the child and, and try mm-hmm. to do whatever work I can and then when my wife and then when my wife gets home from work I could turn back on the business and, and work um, you know throughout the night or maybe like after dinner because a lot of my work now I found I get done between like 8 and 11 p.m like mm-hmm. I mean as far as like my draftings go for my right. listings. So in the morning, if I'm not sourcing, I try to photograph like 90 items. Mm-hmm. And then when those 90 items are photographed and put away, um, usually my wife's home by then. And this is with walking my dog like once maybe yes. or twice. And then at, after uh, she gets home, you know, I kind of work out mm-hmm. and then I hang out with her and we, we eat dinner together. And then after dinner, I usually get back to work on the business. So I'm definitely pushing like 50 hours a week, I would say. I mm-hmm. do a little bit of work on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, but that's yeah. because the work's not like work, you know, like it is right. work, but it's not. Um, I mean, when you work for yourself, you get to decide how much work you want to do and you get all the money. You know? Right. So, it's a win win. It's great. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of work being a business owner, but you're right. It's not it's not hard work. It's, you know, you can, you know, it's just, you know, and you have sounds like a really good system down pat. Um, for your listing goals and your sourcing in your schedule. And I think, um, well, based on my experience when having Haley, I, yeah, I would get up early and do quietly try to do the shipping in other rooms. The packing tape wouldn't wake her up, but, or get the labels printed and everything, get that all done, take her with me to the post office, come back. And then she would, you know, depend on her age, she was ready for a nap. So then I could get a lot of drafts and such done. She wake up, I take her to the park and enjoy an yeah, hour or so for her. And then maybe she'd watch baby Einstein or something and I'd do some more, but you just kind of figure it out. It sounds like you have a good idea of how to juggle the both. Um, Hopefully. We'll see how the little one dictates when they come. <laughs> well, then we have the dog too. So the discussion with the dog was, this was in yeah. February. And my neighbor got this dog for mm-hmm. a Labradoodle from the litter and uh, my wife wanted to go see him. And I was, didn't really think much about it. Cause we had lost our dog actually around the time we, I lost my grandma. I lost my oh, dog too. Gosh. I forgot about that. So oh that, that was like a lot of, a lot wow. of pressure and negativity and like, yeah. yeah, I was ready to just change something up. Like, mm-hmm. so yeah, we lost our dog and, and it'd been a few months or, you know, six, eight months. Mm-hmm. And she said, well, how about we, get uh the brother of this dog my neighbor's dog and then I said mm-hmm. why aren't we trying to have a kid like what if you know and, and my neighbor said it'd be better to get the dog now and train him as a puppy without yeah. the kid because once the kid's there you don't want to have the puppy around as much Agreed. you know and I, I do think that was a good idea like yeah. as, as stressful as the puppy was for a couple months probably two months was pretty rough uh he's he's pretty good now he's just big though he's a big yeah. guy oh yeah they can get pretty big they're like sweet dogs though he's how big yeah, he's 54 pounds and he's oh seven. my goodness so i think he's gonna be like 70 pounds or whatever so wow. good dog hope. though good dog for families and stuff yeah too. sweet no, he, yeah he, he is a, a loving dog so oh. definitely excited about it but yeah um hopefully if if you know and i don't really want to send our child to daycare because yeah. it just seems like just not yeah. a good thing but at the same time, I want them to have like the interactions. I just think when they're real small, they do a lot of sleeping and stuff. And yes, eating. they do. So like, I think I can work something out. And then maybe when they're getting into their like uh, toddler years, maybe mm-hmm. send them to a daycare to, to interact with kids and things like that. I think that's, that's exactly what we did. And the, your, each child's different, but you'll know when they're right. Re- you know, that point is ready. I remember um, probably about my third year into business and having Haley, um, that she was, I could tell that she was at the growth that she wanted to interact, you know, when she's the other kids, I'm like keeping her home by myself with just me during the day, I was kind of doing her disservice. So we got started looking into like pre-K and, and don't quote me, I think it was around three or four, but I, you know, got her into, you know, she would just go for twice a week for the first, like just for a couple of hours. And then that gave me the opportunity to go meet with my consignment clients and stuff like that. And it gave her that social interaction, um, which is good, but you're right. When at first they're just going to be sleeping a lot and that I'd have her like in the little bouncer thing right by my desk while I'm working. And, you know, and, um, it was a good setup for sure. Yeah. Pretty excited. Really excited. A little nervous, but excited. Like, yeah. Nervous. To be expected. It's something new. You, I'm sure you and your wife are going to do amazing. And um, it's exciting that you have the freedom with your business. I know you have responsibilities with your business as well, but that you can enter that 
um, with this new season with having that freedom. So Sean, tell us, what is some of the biggest lessons that you've learned since you did make that transition? Man, I, know. I would have to say one of the bigger things is like when you have an issue like at work, um, mm -hmm. you have other people you can kind of ask or a boss, you can always just mm -hmm. pass the buck to him. Like when you're on your own, like there's nobody there. Like you can maybe call a friend or, or yeah. reach out to someone like you and ask for help. But um, when, when push comes to shove, it's just like, you have to figure it out. And one good example of that, I think yeah. you can see it here, these labels. Yeah. So these labels are for um, each item. And okay. um, I, I put them in a poly bag like this. I'll just pull one out and awesome. show you. And then, you know, you just label it. So. Uh, an issue I had actually last night was um, I print a thousand of those at a time. So I mm -hmm. bought a whole pack of 22,000 and then I have uh, the, the Rolo printer and it can mm -hmm. print them out. But in order to print them out, you have to format uh, Word to print those properly. Mm -hmm. And Word is, you know, it's a little complex if you've not used it. If you only use it to write papers in high school, like to try to figure out how to use other things. Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot of YouTube videos, but there's no YouTube video that shows exactly that size label. And I may make a video about it. That actually may be, yeah, that's yeah. something I like. I think Hope YouTube someone. should be more of a tool for like mm -hmm. how to do this. And then you, you search it and find it. And I, I think, agree. I think that is where my passion would be in YouTube. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, getting back, I'm going to grab this too. Okay. So this is the role. All right. So this is 7,000 to 8,000 items. Wow. And those are four by one, but then there's like a mm -hmm. tiny space, like, uh, oh, in between no. each cut. So like whenever you, um, choose to print it, you have to like create an Excel sheet, put like 7,000, 8,000 on the Excel, uh -huh. and then you have to save it. And then when you pull it up in word, you have to go to mailings and create labels. Mm -hmm. And then you can't just type four inches by one inches. Boom. Like there's six different measurements that it requires. Yeah. And then they have like, um, company specific ones for their labels. So if you mm -hmm. went and bought uh, a Dymo label or an Avery label, it has a code with it. And that code corresponds to the exact size so that the print engine knows what it is. Well, it doesn't work for custom, you know, labels I got from uh, Amazon no. because they're just like generic, but that's, oh. you can get them for cheap. Right. So anyway, you have to change from inches to points and create this whole thing. And then I got them to print fine. And it took like two hours to figure it out. Oh, gosh. Now, when I went to reprint today, now this was like months back when I figured it out, when I went to reprint after updating the Windows 11, that yeah. saved, no. uh, the thing was gone. So I didn't have it. Oh, and no. it was like 1030. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Because I was going to just let it print while I was doing something else. Sure. You know? And I had to figure out how to do it. And I was a little panicking because I remember how difficult it was, but it only right. took 20 minutes to figure out. That's good. You've improved. It's like, yeah. And yeah. So that's one thing where it's like, if I would have just given up on myself, like, yeah. and I wake up the next morning, I have the same problem. It's yeah. not gone. I need yeah. those labels. Like without them, I would have had to like handwrite them or buy a different mm -hmm. type of labeling system. And the, the key to this, this business in particular is it's, it's like a factory. You mm -hmm. want everything to be similar and you want it to, to last and you don't yeah. want to have to change things. Yeah. And that was just one little headache of, of something mm -hmm. that was just hard that I didn't expect, you know, cause whenever I had problems at work that were super challenging or I just couldn't, you know, you couldn't see the, the, was it see the forest through the trees? Sure. Um, you have someone better than you usually there, you know, and, and I don't have that here. So I have to figure out those types of problems. It so, yeah. falls on your own shoulders, huh? Definitely. Until it's fixed or resolved. Oh, but as I've far as that goes, I mean, um, you know, if, uh, I, I try to list items every day. I list them on Saturdays mm -hmm. and Sundays as well. And what I tell myself is if I don't do those listings, it's similar to like a no call, no show mm -hmm. at like a, a job or, you yeah. know, and those, those will get you fired, you know? So there's mm -hmm. like, that's the accountability I put on myself to make sure I get the work done. And, you know, and, and if I want to like, I, I call it like buying days off for myself, I mm -hmm. just front load the work and, Smart. and then I, um I just launch the drafts when I'm on vacation. And then I put the vacation mode. And then I give myself one extra day to do all the shipping because oh, the volume and, and ends up being like a lot, yeah. a lot of work. So, wow. That's really, I would so say those, some... 
things you've learned for sure through the process. Uh, unexpected problems, trying to figure it out and then realizing like when you are kind of like frazzled or you just, you know, yeah. you're, you're not getting it, like take a break, like take a second, kind of uh, do some more Google searches, like figure, figure out what you need to figure out and then, mm-hmm. and then get back to it when you're fresh. Cause sometimes, especially if you sleep on a problem, like yeah. you really do sometimes get um, solutions. You know, I think your yeah. brain has a way of processing uh, when you're asleep and, and like, you know, bounce around ideas and, and then you, you come up with it and then you go back to it and you're like, Oh, like, this oh, is easy. Like why, is- why did I do that? Yeah. Like, um, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've had that myself. And sometimes too, just when your body is tired and you're exhausted or frustrated, you just not, yeah, you're right. You go, sometimes I've done that. I just like, all right, I'm just turning down the computer I'm shutting up shop. I'm going to bed, you know, it'll be there in the morning. And sometimes you come with a different perspective and able to solve it much better. So if someone is looking at stepping out from part-time to full-time, not doing it the way I did it, I just leaked out. You did it in a more methodical, wiser way. Um, what would you give them as advice before they take the step? Definitely. I think, I think what, what's most important, and it's kind of cliche, but it's like, you need to make sure you know how to handle money. Like, if you have struggle paying your bills with your full-time job, do not quit and start uh, reselling. Yeah. If um, if you can't like set aside a certain amount of certain amount of dollars per month mm-hmm. just on your own for a savings or whatever, don't do it because um, reselling full-time like uh, you have to pay your own taxes. A lot of people yeah. don't pay taxes, yeah. but you got to pay taxes. And now that the IRS changed the 1099 format so that mm-hmm. if you sell over $600, you will get a tax form. And yeah. you know, a lot of people casually sell and, and they're not going to be aware of that. And it's going to be, it's going to be a big deal. So um, in addition to that, uh, you know, things, things don't seem like, it's not like as much money because mm-hmm. uh, if you sell an item for, let's just say a hundred dollars and you paid 10, so you're expecting $90 back. Well, that $90, mm-hmm. you know, you have to pay like the taxes on it. And then um, it's, I don't know, let me, let me go back. I think it's like, I guess if you see, if you just watch YouTube all day and you see the, the, the big YouTubers and you see all their sales and how much money they're making, um, I would, I would guess that most of those people are making like 50,000 a year, maybe like, Mm -hmm. I don't think many of them are making over a hundred thousand dollars. So uh, mm-hmm. If you live in an affluent area and you got to, you know, maybe you're quitting a job that was making $60,000 and you think you can replace it because you sold a few expensive yeah. items. Like it, you're not, yeah. it's not going to equate like a one for one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to take much more time to, to make that money back. And um, I think you need to just do it part-time until you're making like, yes. I mean, I would say even like close to what your, what your mm-hmm. income is. And, and that may sound like impossible to do, but um, if you cannot find enough items, like if you cannot spend enough money throughout the year, you're not going to be able to sell enough to, to yeah. make the money that you want to make. Um, so if you want to make 50,000 a year, you probably have to spend closer to like 150,000 mm-hmm. that year. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't, I don't think they get that. And they, they just watch how exciting it is, but those yeah. YouTubers, like they cut a lot of stuff out. Sure. They don't show you like the, the boring, like taking photos no one all day watch or, that. Or yeah. exactly they just want yeah. to see like the nice finds which you know it's super addicting to watch those but sure um they may go to 10 sales to find one or two items you know so mm-hmm. um, if, if you're thinking about like trying to to do this i would definitely do it for a year or two and and if you're not going up each month like if you're mm-hmm. having really bad months or a really good month um i would i would i would reconsider it because uh, there's a lot of things that, that change. Like I have, I have mm-hmm. consistent sales and whenever the Super Bowl happened, there mm-hmm. was four days where sales were much lower, less than 50% of what, yeah. what it was for, for, uh, a normal week. And I didn't know what it was and it was the Super Bowl, And then it was a mm-hmm. Valentine's day. Mm-hmm. And then, um, like a lot of those major holidays, like people aren't shopping on eBay. Right? So you would, you know, typically on a regular job, you get paid time off, but if you're reselling full-time, you actually take a pay cut because people aren't buying your stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things to kind of think about. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and that's there's... exactly why I wanted you on today. Cause that right there, you've learned through the time, you know, that, that that's the real life as a reseller and, and to think about it carefully, you know, stepping out and making sure that you have, like you said, how many, how many items do you typically source a week? 
So um, I have some notes here. So, okay. And I want to talk because the last time we talked was when I was part time and I had been yeah. part time for a year at that time. So right. uh, back then I had 241 items listed and I was mm -hmm. selling like video games, VCR, shoes. Um, and I said my biggest problem was storage. Uh -huh. and then, uh, I used free shipping and um, I was only buying things that was 100% sell through, meaning like if you looked up on eBay and there was 10 listed and 10 sold in 90 days, those were the only types of items I was buying. Right. Uh, now, uh, my entire I actually built, um, and I have a video that a lot of people haven't watched, but I have a video where I built an outbuilding in my, uh, it's a shed nice. and it has a loft. Now that building was to store everything from my garage wow. other than like my weight setup. So I had to build that structure. It was like $2,700 and I, I built it myself. And then I moved everything from the garage over there and I, I bought these storage racks in my garage. So now storage isn't really a problem. Nice. And, um, but I mean, each storage rack costs like two to $300. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's and and each one of those months I'm making money reselling, but I'm spending so much on the business. So even now mm -hmm. I'm, I think, I think I only have to buy like 50 more, uh, boxes that actually hold my items. Mm -hmm. There are these right here and they're not, they're not eBay branded. Yeah. Just as tape eBay tape. Right. So I have to buy another hundred of those, which is like 200 or, I don't yeah. know, like a couple hundred bucks. And, um, I currently have 3,363 items, but once those items are bought, it'll be the first time that I won't have to spend anything like structurally on the business. I won't need any more racks. So like I can mm -hmm. actually start stacking like more money because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have bills, I have house bill. I right. have, I used to have truck payment. I paid my truck off. Oh, but, good. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, and, and it's just a lot of money comes out, you know? Yeah. And, and then you start thinking like, um, if I want to hang out with friends tonight, like then mm -hmm. I'm losing two hours of, of time. I could be productive working, you know? So it's right. like start thinking everything in like mon monetary, you know, yeah. like how much money you're, you're making and, and wasting, but yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think I had, I said, I had sold like 900 items last time we talked. With mm -hmm. and I've sold over 9,000 now. Wow. And 10 times. Wow. Yeah. It's incredible. And, but my average sale price is $20, you know, you've gone from 900 listings all the way to 9,000 listings as full time. And I love what you said about budgeting, how that's so key. Um, if you're looking at doing this full time. Um, so what great advice that you've given our listeners today. So if you could do it all over again, would you still do what you've done? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. There's nothing like it, is it? The freedom that it provides. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a rewarding feeling. Like mm -hmm. um, the the only thing about it, if you do become a full time reseller, is everyone will ask you, "Are you making enough? Like, is yeah. it enough?" I you know, and at, for a while, it's not. You know, for a while, mm -hmm. it's it's not a lot of money. But then you kind of get to the point where you don't even mm -hmm. want to tell them because then then they'll feel like like you're lying or you're jaded yeah. or something. So you kind of just tell them like, yeah, I make enough to pay the bills, but mm -hmm. uh, it can definitely be lucrative. You just have to figure out how to build, um, build your systems. And once your yeah. systems are built, you just, uh, you just double down on them and you mm -hmm. keep going, but yeah, it's, it's an expensive endeavor, but, uh, <laughs> it definitely pays off in the end, uh, financially and, uh, uh you know, emotionally. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I'm just so proud of you for taking the leap. I know it wasn't easy, but I think you, you made the right decision and yeah, I'm with you having a, your own business has its ups and downs and you definitely have to be good with your budgeting and your finances because you don't want to, I, I used to think I could out earn my stupidity financially, not saying I was stupid, but I, when I was young and I started this, I wasn't good with my finances. And so once I learned that, that was definitely the tipping point where everything turned into positive for my business. So I'm glad that you, um, you touched on that for sure. So Sean, last words of advice you would leave our viewers today. Uh, I think if you have something out there that you want to try, um, mm -hmm. it's like a dream or um, something that you, you don't think is attainable. If, yeah. if you give it a little bit each day and then, and then become more serious about it, like think about it every day, you know, anytime you have a chance, if, if if you do all those things and, and really put it at the forefront of your mind and, and you, you have passion for it, like yeah. you can, you can do it. You can definitely do it. Um, some things aren't attainable, you know, like if I wanted to be a professional athlete, like it's not going to happen, but 
um, there are definitely things you can do. If you want to be a YouTuber, you want to be a reseller, um, you just have to try. And if you're not willing to put in the work, um, you're going to get bad results, you know? So mm -hmm. you can't work 10 hours a week and make a hundred thousand dollars. It's not going to happen. You know, no, you definitely. have to work 60 hours a week, but, um, it, it can happen. So if, if you got something out there that you want to try, just, uh, give it your all and, and, you know, stay consistent with it. And, and you may surprise yourself. Wise words of advice. Thank you, Sean. This life is short, time is precious, and we need to make the most of it. And you're right. There's something on our heart to do with calculated educating ourselves. And like you did talking to a lot of people before you made the leap. Um, but just take a chance and take a chance on yourself like you did. So I'm so proud of you, Sean. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your day. I'll let you get back to your reseller life. And we'd love to touch base with you in the future. And let's see. And congratulations on being a new dad on the way. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate it.